Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another breakfast with Blaha. And today I'm having chicken breast and uh, steamed mixed vegetables. For those curious what that is, this is just the Asian stir fry I get from Costco. I throw it in the Instapot and I grill some chicken on the Foreman grill. Nothing complicated. So let's get over and talk about squats. So there's quite a few different ways that I build big squats in my lifters. Uh, there's a number of different ways that I've done it based upon the equipment that they have. But my preferred method, and I have generally found this to be sound for myself also, uh, if you were to ask me what's the fastest way to build a big squat, I'm going to give you uh, basically a trifecta. It's a combination. It would be box squats, mainly speed boxes, right? doing speed box squats. Preferably against bands or chains, if you have them. It can be done with straight weight. I've done it with lifters with straight weight and built some big squats. Just I prefer the other. Going to be getting strong at good mornings. And sled racks. Sled racks. And here's why we use these three things. You guys already know how I feel about box squats. They help you build a high rate of force production. All right, they give us a lot of training density. In other words, we get a lot of training done in a very short period of time. Now, to do speed boxes correctly, you do need to be in shape. And they'll help get you in shape, too, if, if you aren't doing cardio and conditioning. We'll come over to the sled drags in a minute on that. So, speed boxes, that's, that's your number one key. This is the foundation of, of, around which the conjugate system is built. Uh, I have personally found it to be absurdly effective for both myself and for my clients. Okay? And my, especially my lifters in other sports, not powerlifting. Because again, the, the high rate of force production demands of the exercise, it helps build more explosive athletes. It's going to make you faster. Even more so if we got chains and bands, bands particularly. And it works. It teaches us how to power squat. Because again, let's talk about how do you build the biggest squat, usually through power squatting. Very, very few people are structurally built in a way to squat the heaviest weights with an Olympic style squat. Sorry, that's just the reality. The power squat uses more muscles and it uses a more favorable bar path. Okay, and it's that simple. It allows us to incorporate more muscle mass. That's a big advantage. And people can deny that all they want, but that's reality. The more muscles you're able to put it behind a lift, the more weight you're gonna lift. And speed boxes give us a, a good hypertrophy base and all those primary movers, and they're easy on recovery. That's the thing. We can do a decent amount of volume on them and they don't beat us up. But again, they teach us to be explosive. They teach us to be forceful. They teach us maximum force production, which helps with our maxes. And again, it teaches us how to squat for power, the sort of stances and stuff that we use. Good mornings builds everything but the quads. Good morning teaches you to box squat. And we use all types of good mornings. Right? You guys have seen me do seven or eight different types of good mornings over the years and train them you know against bands against chains with different bars power good mornings uh, stricter good mornings good mornings off straps and slings from a dead stop all right done all these things but they teach you how to box squat they teach you on the eccentric how to push your hips back okay because you good morning on your way down into, into the box squat. Teaches you how to perform the eccentric correctly. They build all the muscles other than the quad to so the squat. And keep in mind, the quad is the least contributing of the primary movers. Out of the three primary movers, the quads are the least important. It helps over develop the others. helps you build the hamstrings and the erectors, which are two of the most important stabilizers in a power squat. People talk about hamstrings being used in the squat. They're not. They don't help move the weight. 
they help put you into a more favorable bar path. Correct stabilization. So erectors and hamstrings help put you into the power position and hold it tighter. Well, the good mornings build those directly up while still building adductors and glutes. They also give you, you the ability to have good stability in a forward lean. So especially if your squat starts to turn into a good morning, if you can good morning as much as you squat, guess what? You can just power your way through it if this happens to you. And you can power your way through it safely, without a problem. So it does all that for us. Then we come over to the sled drags. There's a synergy here. The sled drags, if you look at the EMG data, unlike quads and glutes, what have they found comparing this for, because this is for field athletes, this is what strength and conditioning was looking at this for field athletes. A Kissimmee your squat volume be replaced with sled drags or pushes. What they found is the EMG activity in the quads and the glutes was just as high as in a squat if we did comparable volumes, meaning a 20 step max pulling a sled where you could only get 20 steps and you're pretty much running to failure. And they compared that with a 10 rep max on a squat. They had the same EMG activity, which means muscle activation the same. But sled drags don't beat you up the same. Because there's no eccentric. It's all concentric based, which is what we need for power and power. Okay? They help build up all the primary movers. What are, what are the primary movers in a squat? In order of importance, it's probably going to be adductors, glutes, quads. Builds all of them up, and it comes back and gets, gets you that extra quad work you're missing off the good mornings. What else does it do? All easy to recover from. Just like the speed boxes, you can do a dip fair amount of sled dragging without getting beat up. It also gets you into shape. So let's come back over to that being in shape. Doing the most aggressive waves of speed squats, the really advanced waves, requires what? Requires conditioning. You have to be in shape to do them. See where we're going? Sled drags are conditioning work. They help get you into shape. So what happens when we do all this together, we create a synergy. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you've got a big squat. But squatting, not always. Not the fastest way to do it. It's not the fastest way to get there. What I'm describing here is, you know, we use the speed boxes to teach the technique to squat correctly for a power squat, develop high rate of force production, cover our base hypertrophy. All right? Good mornings to help build two of the primary movers to maximize the, the hypertrophy of two of the most important stabilizers for a power squat itself. And to help correct if you start turning into a good morning during the squat, to help you push through it teaches you how to perform the eccentric to sit into a box squat correctly. And then we have the sled drags to help get you into shape. Very easy on recovery, because again, there's no eccentric loading. And to also finish hypertrophying the, the primary movers. This combination works phenomenally well. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.